Hey guys, Flatpak Effects here, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to take your 2D images and make this 3D parallax effect. So stick around, you're watching Flatpak Effects. Hey guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this effect called 3D projection mapping. Now simply put, this effect allows you to take a 2D image and make it appear to be three dimensional. Now this is an intermediate to advanced effect. So if you're new to After Effects, I really recommend that you watch through this video a few times and just carefully follow the steps to make sure you don't miss anything. Now also in this example, you can obviously use your own images, but I've supplied two images here that I got from online. And I've put links in the description below if you wanna use those same images. Now, just two very quick things when you're choosing your images is this effect works best when we're looking at some sort of tunnel, street, or alleyway. Now, it doesn't mean this effect won't work for other images. It's just that you will get the best results if you have an image that is of some sort of tunnel. All right, so the first thing we want to do is create a new composition. I'm just going to call mine effect. I'm going to make sure this is set to 1080, 25, square pixels, and roughly about 30 seconds in length. Now the first thing I want to do is just drag my image straight into this composition and I'll need to resize it so it fits my composition. Now there's four parts to our projector. There's the camera, which is our eyes. There's the light source, which is going to be our torch. There's our image, which could be our hand. And then we have our surface that we're projecting onto, which is our wall. Now we need to create each one of those. So the next part is we're gonna create the camera. So I'm just gonna right click and create a new camera. I wanna set this to be 28 millimeters and then hit okay. And then I also want to create the first layer. So we've got four distinctive layers here that we're gonna project our image onto. We've got the ground plane, we've got the ceiling, and then we've got these two side planes. So we need to recreate these inside of After Effects. So the first thing is I'm gonna right click and create a solid. I'm just gonna set this as default, a white layer, and then hit OK. Then I'm gonna come up to Effect, down to Generate, and I wanna add this grid effect. And that's just gonna make it a bit easier to see what we're doing here. Now the first part of this is I need to make it a 3D layer. Now we need to rotate this layer so that it matches our ground plane as best we can. So we do this by going to the rotation tool and I rotate this layer like this. Then I can move this into position and I can continue to adjust this layer and scale it as well so that it fits our ground plane as close as we can possibly get it. So something like that. Now next, I need to adjust the material options of this layer. So I can navigate down to the material options and I need to make sure the car shadows is set to off. The light transmission is zero except shadows is on and except lights is off. So this is really important that these are set to these specifications. Now, once I've got that, all I need to do is take that layer, I can duplicate it. I'm just gonna simply use my Z property just to move it up towards the ceiling. So it lines up nicely with our edge here. So something like that. Next, I can take one of those layers again, I can duplicate them. And this time I'm gonna use my rotation tool on the Y axis to move them up into a vertical position. And then I can adjust them using my Z axis here so that they line up with the edges here. And then I can reposition this by scaling it and then shifting it around until basically these edges all line up. So you can see what we're doing here. We're basically creating a square. So I can do some very slight adjustments here. And then I wanna take that layer again and I duplicate it. And then all I need to do is just move it over using the Z axis and just do the same thing again. I just reposition it here. 
until it roughly lines up with my edges here. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as these sort of gaps here are all sort of closed, that's all we need. You can see it's already created that illusion of being a tunnel. We've created almost a three dimensional tunnel inside of After Effects. Now the last part is I'm just gonna create an end plane. So I'm gonna duplicate this one last time. I'm gonna rotate this layer so that it's flat. I'm just gonna simply move this one into the distance and then just reposition it as best I can there. Now it's worth at this stage just taking the time to get it as accurate as you possibly can, but you can adjust this later. So don't worry too much if it doesn't all line up at this point. Now the other thing we can do here is just to check how this box is all lining up. So if I go to my camera tool, I can actually just rotate this box around. Now I can actually just move this out and you'll start to see that we can see this box in a three dimensional space. So you can see that my end layer is not lined up the rest of my planes. I can just simply drag this one back here and grab this layer and move it closer to my grid and then I can just reposition this here. I'm also just gonna rotate this one slightly and back into place. Now understand this may be quite difficult for some of you if you haven't worked with any sort of 3D program or you have trouble imagining a three-dimensional space, but it can be done. It's just a matter of slowly working through it and moving each layer a small bit at a time until you end up with everything in the, in the correct position. Now I can see here that this layer will need to come closer just to help close that gap. Once you think you've finished your box, I can just reset my camera here and then just make any final adjustments that I need so that we're as close to that edge as possible. Now a bit of overlap's okay. It's just that we need to have all the edges sealed up. Now once we've got this in the position that we're happy with, now, we can, now we're ready to actually remove these grids. So I'm gonna select those white solids and I'm just gonna tap this FX button to remove the actual grid so we end up with our white planes again. And then the last part of this is I'm going to create the light. So I'm gonna right click and create a new light and it's very important that I set this to be spot. I need this to be 100% intensity. I need my cone angle to be 180 degrees and my cone feather I need set to zero. Now most important, I need the color of the light source to be white and I need this to be car shadows to be on. The other thing I can adjust here is the shadow darkness to be 100%, which is important, and then hit OK. Now at the moment we can't actually see anything and that's because we need to actually position all of our elements in the right place. So I'm gonna to go to this button here to, to go to the two view horizontal and the view on, on the right hand side is what our camera sees. And the view on the left is our scene played out from above. So from a bird's eye view. Now we want everything to line up with our camera's position. So if I hit my camera layer and hit P on the keyboard, I can actually copy this position property here and I can paste it onto my light source. And that's moved our light so it's in line with our camera. And I'm also going to do the same with this layer here after I turn on the 3D layer again. So I'm gonna make it a, a 3D layer and I'm going to paste position property onto that layer and that's moved that layer in line with our camera and I actually need it to sit in front of the camera. So I'm gonna move, move it out so it sits away from the camera. So we end up with a gap, that's our image and that's our camera layer there. So we need a bit of a gap there and then we need to scale our image back down. So I go down to my scale property by hitting S on the keyboard and I'm gonna scale this right down. Now you will need to scale this down to probably around 1% or so, and then you can readjust the final scale so that it fills the edge of your screen where you roughly had it before. At the moment, mine's really blurry. The reason for this is because I have depth of field turned on on my camera layer. I can come down to the camera options and I can just turn off depth of field and then make the final adjustment here just to fill the edge of my screen. Now I'm just gonna go back to my original one view so I can see what I'm doing. 
Now at the moment, looks exactly the way we had it before, but we have to do one last thing to our scene here, which is adjust the material options for our projector. Our layer at the moment is not transparent. So when the light hits it, the light's not actually passing through onto our background layer. So we need to make it transparent so the light can shine through this layer and project it onto our background. So we go down to the material options for your image and we need to change the car shadows from off to only. So if I click it once, it goes to on. If I click it twice, it goes to only. And then we need to adjust the light transmission from zero to 100. And there you go. So our image has now reappeared. Now again, it looks exactly the same as we had before, but if I go to my camera tool and just simply pan around our scene, you can see the big difference. You can see that it's actually now turned it into a three-dimensional scene. I can actually turn all the way out here and it'll change the perspective that I'm looking. So if I wanted to do a simple camera move here, I'm gonna set a keyframe for my position and point of interest. I'm gonna to go to my camera Z track tool and go across to roughly about five seconds here and just do a simple dolly movement in. And if I played through that, you can see straight away the difference that this effect has created. You can see it actually looks like the camera is traveling down the tunnel. Now you can also do some other interesting things here by using the different camera tools. I can move the camera closer to the ground here. And as my camera moves towards down the tunnel, I could move the camera over to this side of the wall. And then I could rotate the perspective. So it looks, so we've got a bit more of a dynamic camera movement going on here that really shows how this effect is working. So you can see the difference that we've got there. Now you can see we're actually getting this line appear right on the edge here. And that is where the box doesn't line up with this side of the box as well. So all you need to do is you just need to scale this up slightly. And that's just gonna fill that edge again. So it's just where the two layers aren't connecting. So you just need to look out for those and then make your adjustments as you go. Now that is one way to create this effect and it can get a little bit complicated, but the key is just slowly work away and follow those steps very carefully and eventually you'll get there. Now here's another composition that I prepared of a road. And again, I followed the same principle that I've just shown you here in this previous one. But in this case, I'm using two planes instead of four. So I deleted the side walls and then I went back to using my floor plane and my ceiling plane. And it ends up having the exact same effect. Now you can take the same principle and apply it to, to a wide variety of different images. And you can also take this effect to a very advanced level where you can actually create your own custom planes by masking a layer and then projecting your image over the top of that. Now at the moment, I'm just trying to keep things simple for you and easy to follow. So there you go, guys. There's an introduction to camera and projection mapping inside of After Effects. I hope you've learned something. And if you have any further questions about this effect, please pop it in the comment section below. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. And remember, Flatpak Effects is the flat pack anyone can build.